Hey, what's up guys? Let's run some Windows games on Mac. The way I'm going to show y'all is going to allow this to be completely free and open source and like, it's really really cool because the performance is like, actually perfect. Like, it feels just like running like, Mac games on a Mac, but like, it's Windows games. So, it's going to be super cool. I'm going to show y'all how it's done. So first, you're going to want to go to your web browser of choice. You're then going to want to search Whiskey Mac OS. Alright, so you've got two pages, the GitHub and the Whiskey app. If you want to look over their source code, it's over here on GitHub, but we're just going to go over to their official site. So then we'll click see all releases, it's going to regroup back to their GitHub, actually. And then we just click on this little zip file. So that downloads, it does it super quick, because it doesn't actually have that much in terms of file storage. So we're just going to double click the zip to extract it, and then we're going to drag it over to our applications folder in Finder. All right, so it's in that applications folder now. That's pretty cool. So we're gonna wanna go over two applications actually. And then let's go ahead and hold down control and then open. This will allow you to run code that has not been notarized by Apple. Apple does not notarize a lot of open source projects. So when you download apps off of GitHub, it's always a good idea to hold down control and click. All right, so we've got Whiskey opened. So. If you don't have Rosetta installed, it'll ask you to install Rosetta. And most of y'all will not have GPTK installed. So what GPTK is, is basically a way of being able to port Mac, port Windows games over to Mac. It's basically a modified version of Wine, which is a project that's used on products like the Steam Deck and other Linux computers to basically let you play your Windows games on non-Windows platforms, which is amazing, but we've not had this on Mac that much. Previously, you'd have to pay like $80 for crossover, or you'd have to run a virtual machine. And I don't know about you, but I'm kind of broke. So over here, we have GPTK. So all we gotta do is click next and it'll just download the dependencies, which is like really cool. And as you can see, it doesn't even take that long to download, but of course, the speeds will vary depending on your internet connection. So we'll just go ahead and let it go through with the download. All right, there we go. We got the verification check mark. So what we've got here next is this button called Create Bottle. We're gonna click this, and we can name it whatever we want. I'm gonna call it Steam, because I want to be able to run Steam on this. But if you have another launcher for your Windows games you wanna run, you can just call it that, or you can even have multiple launchers within a bottle. It's basically like a virtual drive for your fake Windows system that it's gonna run. And you can pick whichever Windows version. I recommend just leaving it at 10 because Steam's going to discontinue Windows 7 support later this year, so... Unless you just want to, like, have your games not work at some point, just set it to Windows 10. A few moments later... Alright, so it's all loaded now. We're actually going to need to go ahead and grab the Steam executable. So, this would seem easy, but there's a bit of a problem. If we go to the Steam website and then we hit download, by default, it would normally show the Apple logo up here. Now I have it showing the Windows logo. So y'all are probably wondering, how am I doing this? Well, let me show you. So if you're on Chrome or Firefox, you can use extensions and I have one called User Agent Switcher. I highly recommend the Firefox version of it because you can mimic a Windows machine in terms of uh, what they think that you're on on the latest version of Firefox. So right now, when I'm connected to Steam, they think I'm running Windows 11. So I'll go ahead and click on this extension. And over here, you got Windows, Linux, Mac OS. If I set it back to default and refresh the page, check this out. This is so crazy. They think I'm on Mac now. And you'd be thinking, why would you just install the Mac version of Steam? Well, the Mac version of Steam can't run Windows games. They don't have Wine or Proton or any of the fancy compatibility layers on there. So, you won't be able to play your games that way. And so, what I recommend is that you search up User Agent Switcher and download it from the Mozilla Extension Store. So, once you've got that downloaded, you just set it to Windows, you hit Refresh, and just like magic, you've got Install Steam. So over here you're going to see Steam Setup EXE. What you're going to want to do is go back over to your Whiskey window, right here. And you're going to want to open up your uh, C drive. So we're over here in C drive now. We're going to want to go to Finder, right click it, and create a new Finder window over here. And then hop on over to our downloads. 
can then take the Steam Setup.exe and we're going to just put in our C drive just to make sure that our bottle has access to Steam. You can then hit the Run button and then click on Steam.exe and then open. And so in a couple of seconds, we're going to be greeted with Steam Setup. Now, it will look a little bit blurry on this because I'm using upscaling to make everything look a little bit bigger on the screen. But in most cases, it will just look fine. So just like that, it's now installed. So we just hit finish to run Steam. It'll do the ugly Steam updater just like as if I were on Windows. Like, that's so cool. Like, it, it's amazing to be able to just see Windows Steam running on a non-Windows machine that's completely locked down. Like, that, that's just insane to me. So it's gonna just extract the package. A few moments later. So after a couple of minutes, I was now greeted with this. So what you're gonna wanna do is go ahead and put in your credentials. I'm gonna have these blurred out for obvious reasons. You just type in your credentials. And then you'll want to keep the check remember me on there because Steam can take a little bit of time to load up so you don't want to have to sign in every single time. So I'm going to click sign in. And just like that, we're on the Steam page greeted with advertisements because that's what Valve likes to do. I should really disable that. And they're also greeted with the friends pain. That always happens. I'm going to go ahead and minimize Firefox because it'll make it look a little cleaner. So and just like that, we've got a Windows version of Steam running on Mac. This is amazing. I'm going to go ahead and click Library, and as you can see, all of these games are actually now available to download. If you use the Mac version of Steam, it'll just be grayed out or it'll ask you to stream from another device that can run it, like your Linux computer or your uh, Windows computer. So for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to actually download Crab Champions. Like, shout out to this game. It's super cool, super fun. I love it. It's really cool. And I'll be back when it's done downloading. And just like that, We've got Crab Champions right here on Mac OS. This game was not built for Mac. If we go to the store page and we look at the system requirements, it will literally tell you that it's not on Mac. Oh, oh look, you need Windows 7 or Windows 10 or Windows 8 64-bit. And no, nah, I'm not on that. Instead, I'm on Mac Mini M1, 16 gig RAM, startup disk, Mac OS, serial number, blurred out. 14.2.1. I'm pretty sure that's a different system in terms of the specs. Alright, let's actually go ahead and launch up the game, see if it works. I may have to mute the audio for copyright reasons. Oh, it actually has to install Visual C runtime, so we're gonna do that. That's a normal Steam thing. And I mean, again, it's so cool seeing these Windows prompts just running on a Mac, like as if it were made for it. Like, it's just. It, it, it's like wizardry. I, Ten years ago, I never would have imagined this being possible. Like, as a kid, if I wanted to play games, they were basically just on Windows, and if you had a Mac, well, you weren't playing any games. Like, go get an Xbox. <laughs> so, I'm gonna go ahead and let this run. I'll be back when it's done. Alright, so whenever you get to the end of it, it may give you a setup failed. This is actually completely normal, so it'll literally have set up all the components and at the end it'll just have a minor minor little failure. But if you hit close and if you relaunch the game, it'll just work. So I'm gonna hit play again and check this out. We're gonna be like going into the world of Crab Champions. Oh, okay, so it's full screen now and now it's a window. I'm gonna go ahead and mute the music. Alright, so with that done, as you can see, um, I'm just running Crab Champions and it, it's just working. Performance is a little slow, again, this is because I'm running everything in an extra high resolution for upscaling. But if you're running it like at, uh, I don't know, 900p on a base M1, it's actually like pretty good performance. I've been able to get 60 FPS when running my computer at 1x scale. 
So I'd say if your Mac is just a lot's default configs, you're going to have a pretty good time running the games. So if I go in here, as you can see, yeah, frame rate's pretty smooth, the game just runs, and yeah, it's pretty awesome. So that's basically how you run Windows games on a Mac. I would say it's not perfect yet. There are some games that will not launch. For instance, I tried playing Overwatch and it would not let me play that. And then there are some other games you might have to use separate patches for. I know that Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order requires some extra patching before it'll work correctly. But yeah, just do a little research and most of your games should just run. Uh, and one other thing, if you're running games from like the 2000s that don't support DirectX 11, those might not work either. You'd want to use something else like a virtual machine, which I will teach y'all in a future video. But yeah, hopefully y'all liked the video. If you'd like to see more content like this, consider subscribing and leaving a like. That's it for now.